So thanks for joining me on this Facebook Live and later for joining me on the Remarkable Leadership Podcast. You might not know that our Facebook Lives, or at least some of them, get turned into parts of or a, a show on our Remarkable Leadership Podcast, remarkablepodcast.com. So the question that I ask you in the title tonight is, what do you believe about your folks? Okay, so let me dive into this by telling you a little story. I want you to imagine that two people work for me, actually more than two people work for me, but I want you to imagine for seconds that there are two people that work for me. One is Rachel, and Rachel, let me just tell you, Rachel is a rock star. Rachel is fantastic. Rachel um, does anything that is needed. She seems to think ahead to the next thing. Any task I give her, she seems to be successful at. It looks to me like her potential is unlimited. Anything that I ask of her gets done and anything that could come down the way, she'll do great. And Rachel should probably already have my job and someday will soar way past me because Rachel is a rock star. Well, but I also have Charlie who works for me. And Charlie, well, Charlie, well, you know, Charlie's a good guy. I like Charlie. He works hard, bless his heart. He tries hard. He does the best that he can. And, you know, you can't have all rock stars. You're going to have some people like Charlie, who's just sort of, well, you know, you're going to have some C performers. Charlie's a C performer. I mean, he works hard. He gets the job done, but that's about all he can accomplish. Like he has maxed out his potential and that's Charlie. So if Rachel and Charlie work for me, here's the question. And if you're with me live, you can type in your answer if you want. Who do you think is going to be more successful working for me? Rachel, the rock star, or Charlie, the C performer. Which one do you think will be more successful? And if you're watching later or you're listening, just answer that question in your head. Who do you think is going to be more successful working for me? Well, I'm guessing you're thinking what I'm thinking is, well, of course it's going to be Rachel. She's a rock star. Rachel is fantastic. Like, it's clear that she's the high performer, and she's the high potential person, and she's the person I would love to have more of on my team. Rachel is going to be more successful working for me. Rachel is going to achieve things that I expect of her and more. Rachel is a rock star. And Charlie, well, not so much. Now, as long as we're imagining this story, I want to take another step. Imagine now that they make a machine. It's called the magical, I don't know, it's called the magical potential machine. Uh, it's like an MRI machine, where, but instead of when you go in, they can take a picture inside your body. If you go into this magical machine, when you come out, they give you a score that says this is your real potential. This is how, this is, this is your rock star index, so to speak. Well, let's imagine that both Rachel and Charlie go into this machine and come out with a score. That score, however, is not known by them or me. Would, and, and let's just say one more thing. Let's just imagine for a second, since we're imagining, that the person that had the higher rock star score of potential, according to the magical potential machine, is actually... Charlie. The fact would be Charlie, but the reality that we're living in is Rachel's the rock star and Charlie's not. Which will, will that change the results? No, it really won't change the results. What I'm talking about tonight is the Pygmalion effect. And in the title, I said we're going to talk about the power of Pygmalion. So what do I mean by all of this? I've just proven to you with my little story the following point. And that is that our belief in our folks as their leader has a huge impact on their success. As long as both people are working for me, I'm going to do things intentionally and unintentionally that will improve the likelihood that Rachel will be successful. Let's just think about this. Based on what you believe, what you know that I believe about Rachel and Charlie, if Rachel makes a mistake, what's the, what's the, thoughts that are going through my head. Well, you know what? She's been pretty busy. Just give, give her another chance. She'll get it. And she's going to need a little more time. Charlie makes the same mistake. What's likely going through my head? Well, you know, what do you expect? It's Charlie. I mean, you know, I probably should have should have known it wasn't going to go quite so well, right? See, the reality is the feeling that I have and the belief that I have in my head has a huge impact on their performance. The Pygmalion effect says this. It says that people tend to live up to 
or down to our belief in them. Now, you know that this is true, whether you're following my Rachel and Charlie story or not, don't you? I mean, you think of a person in your life that you knew had believed in you strongly, that you knew thought you could succeed. Did you work a little harder to be successful for them? Did their belief in you change your belief in yourself? Yes, yes, and yes. The Pygmalion Effect says that our belief matters a lot. And if we don't believe people can ultimately be successful, well, that means they're likely not going to be all that successful. If this whole idea of the big million effect seems to ring a bell for you, it could be because you've seen a movie where the basic premise of the movie is the big million effect. Maybe you've seen My Fair Lady, big million effect. Maybe you've seen Trading Places with Eddie Murphy and Dan Aykroyd, big million effect. Maybe you've seen Pretty Woman. Big million effect. The belief of some people had a huge impact on the success uh, and confidence of others. All right, so as a leader, why does this matter? Well, this matters because if I begin to view my folks more like Rachel's, then the chances are they'll be more successful, everything else being equal. Now, does this mean that I'm saying that I should or need to believe that everybody can do every job? No, it's not saying that in the least. What I am saying, though, is if you have folks on your team, the question that you must ask yourself is, do you believe that they have the ability to, the potential to, be successful in the job that they're in and probably at least one more? If you don't believe that, chances are you won't be a very successful coach for them. And chances are the Pygmalion Effect will not be helping you and your Charlies at all. Think about it. If I have to give coaching to my Charlie... Am I going to be as diligent and as persistent and as work as hard at giving that coaching to Charlie as I would to my Rachel? Huh, no. Why not? Well, because in my head, subconsciously, unintentionally, I'll pull up short. I won't go as hard at it. I won't help them be as successful. And what happens is that as my uh, belief in them becomes clear to them, even if it's subconsciously, and usually it is, it will make all the difference in their success as well. The Pygmalion Effect is a huge factor. It's been proven with all sorts of research. I won't bore you with that because I don't think I have to do that. I think that you understand what I mean if you follow my logic. Let me say this. If as a leader, as you listen to this and as you think about this, if you aren't both scared and excited about this prospect, then I haven't done my job. It's our job to think about what do we believe about our folks? And how can we look for what will help us believe in them more? Because the more that we believe in folks, the better chance we have of helping them both consciously and unconsciously. The Pygmalion effect is powerful. It's real. And it has it's an opportunity for us as a leader. So I hope you found this useful. Um, you can see if you're watching here on Facebook uh, Live, you can see the link to the, an upcoming webinar that I'm doing on September the 13th. You click on that link, you can learn everything you need to learn about that webinar. It's a free 30 minute webinar. I'm gonna talk about the importance of expectations. This is a small little chunk of some of the things I'm gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about the power of expectations, what every leader, every new leader, every frontline leader, and every leader needs to know about the power of expectations and how to put that to work. So hopefully this was useful. I hope you'll choose to join me on September the 13th when we talk more and more depth about the power of expectations. We've got another Facebook Live coming up next week. Looking forward to sharing with you then. Uh, and until then, hope you have a great day, a great night, and a remarkable tomorrow. Thanks, everybody.